Hey guys, welcome back. We're continuing to make this simple shoot 'em up in Unity. Last time we implemented a, a simple method for just spamming bullets, any type of bullet in any direction. So naturally our bullets are gonna need some targets, right? That's why in this video, we'll be creating enemies that fly in and out of the screen and make at least one recognizable movement pattern. That's gonna be the good old sine wave. Okay, so a good place to start is to just get an enemy into the game and moving across the screen from right to left. All right, create an enemy type one, just like bullet type one. And then we'll give this a sprite. Um, which one of these sounds the coolest isometric diamond? And we'll name that sprite. Okay, and then zero. And then we'll put this guy in some starting position here. All right, so let's attach that script that's gonna move him from right to left. Uh, let's create it, move right, left. Let's implement that. So simple enough, we're just gonna have some move speed that we uh, change our position by every frame. Our position on the x-axis moving from right to left. Uh, we'll go with five, something reasonable, not sure. And as usual, we'll just grab our position, change it, and reset it. Right, and then dot x, subtract our move speed across the delta time. And that should be more than enough to watch this ship move across the screen. There it goes. All right. And because we don't want it to move on into infinity like that, we're just going to make sure that once it gets past the screen boundary somewhere in the negative region, it's going to go ahead and destroy itself. We can do that in here. Uh, if position.x is less than uh, something like negative two, then go ahead and destroy this game object. And then it'll die when it gets to the other end of the screen. And there it is. Okay. And now that we have one enemy traditionally in shoot em ups, a lot of times enemies will come in, uh, in waves or groups, you know, two or three at a time, four or five. So I'm going to go ahead and create, you know, this. Uh, group. So back in here. Uh, put it somewhere. Doesn't really matter where it is actually. I'm gonna put this enemy in here. Also gonna make this enemy a prefab because we're gonna want to uh, modify it later and have the modifications uh, propagate over all the instances of this thing, and maybe even load them dynamically at some point. Not really sure, uh, but it works better as a prefab. So I'm just gonna take this and duplicate it a few times, move each one just a little bit. And now we have our enemy group, right? And then we can have this group multiple times. Uh, oops. Yeah. Yeah. This group multiple times. And now we'll have two groups of four enemies coming at us. Nice. Having enemies fly at you in just a straight line is fine and all. Um, you'll probably have a lot of those in the game, but we definitely want to increase the challenge just a little bit here. So we're going to want our, our, uh, our enemies to be flying in, let's say, very specific patterns. Uh, and the most common basic pattern that uh, most of these types of games implement uh, that you've probably seen, not even just in shoot 'em ups and other platformers and stuff like that, is a sine wave pattern. You may or may not know it, but you've probably seen it many times. If you've ever seen a sine wave in a graph, that's exactly the motion that we want these ships to follow. Okay, so I'm going to go over to the enemy prefab and create another script over here, and this is going to be move sine. So we already have, not sine, sine. And we already have our move right to left, so we don't need our sine movement to do that. We can just stack on top of it because and we don't want to change our move right to left because we still want to have enemies that only do that, right? So we're just going to have this sine wave movement be built on top of whatever our other movement already is. Okay, let's go in there. 
And I've already described the pattern to you a little bit. Uh, so let's just look at what it looks like at its most in its most basic form. Um, so I actually don't need any variables just yet. So we'll just go straight to fixed update and see what that looks like. We'll grab our position again. Let's create the sign value that we want our uh, ship to follow along. Uh, Unity has this math class um, that has a lot of helpful math functions in it. And it does have a sign function. So our sine wave is essentially going to be a modification of our Y position and the value of the sine wave, basically the height up or down is going to be determined by where on the X axis you want that value. So we're going to be using our X position from our ship to determine where in the Y position it's going to be on the sine wave, just like that. And then we can assign this value to our Y position just like that. But you'll see that this doesn't exactly give us the desired result because of how sine waves work. Just taking a look at that very quickly. Null reference. This is some kind of weird unity bug. Okay. All right, let's just take a look at what that's done. And there it is. It's moving in a sine, sine wave pattern. However, everything's locked to the bottom of the screen. And that's just because, uh, by default, a sine wave just fluctuates between the values of negative one and one. So that was from, from the, the unit size of unity, that's negative one and that's one. So it's just bouncing back and forth between those values. So what we want to do is shift that sine wave up by some amount. And that amount is going to be pretty much exactly where our ships started on the Y axis. So we can just record that when the game starts and then plug that back in when we're setting our Y position to be the sine value. You'll see that here. Um, so we'll call it our um, uh, sine center y. I guess that makes sense. Um, because that's the y position that our sine wave will be centered around. Um, uh, sine center y will equal our transform position dot y right off the start. And then we'll just uh, tack that back on here. Sine center y plus where we want the sine wave. We'll check that out. And there we go, right from the start. And then they're fluctuating between one and negative one off of where we are positioning them. <laughs> so it's one and negative one away from this Y position, right? So it would fluctuate between 5.69 and 3.69. All right, that's fine and all, but we're not really done yet. We can do a lot with this sine function. We can change the way that the sine wave looks and acts which is basically just manipulating the shape of the wave itself, right? And there's two important properties of a sine wave that we, we uh, really care about uh, for the purposes of this game. The first property is gonna be the amplitude of the sine wave. And you can think of the amplitude as simply the height of the wave, right? So by default, um, it's gonna be one. So that means the sine wave is fluctuating between one and negative one. If I set this to some value to something like two, then the sine wave is going to fluctuate from two to negative two, right? And how we apply that is we really just multiply the outcome by the amplitude that we want, right? So instead of one to negative one, it's going to double it. Simple enough. So if we check that out, we'll see a much bigger wave up and down. All right, there it is. And now it looks a little crazier. The guys were just kind of bouncing back and forth. So now I'm going to introduce the second property that we care about. It's called the frequency. And you can think of the frequency as how often you want uh, the sine wave to fluctuate between uh, its highest value and its lowest value. So a higher number would mean that it's bouncing back and forth more often, right? There's less space between the top and bottom of each uh, iteration of the wave. And a lower value would mean that the, those peaks and troughs would happen less often. So it would give the illusion that the wave is stretching out horizontally. Uh, so let's do it with a value of two. And, and where we do this is right here. We just apply this to our uh, X position. And we're telling the sine wave like, hey, we're either further along 
than this original position x, or we're not as far along as this position x, so give us a different sine value as if we were at that different position on the sine wave's x-axis. And you'll see that here. So now they should be bouncing up and down twice as fast, or twice as often, I should say. And that's exactly what's happening there, right? So in order to stretch that out, we can really just say, instead of times two, we can say, go by half, bounce, bounce up and down half as often. And that didn't work because these are, those are public uh, values, right? So frequency 0 0.5, and those are now like locked in here. So I can do that to both of these guys. 0.5. And now we can see that it's much smoother, much less frequently moving up and down between the top and bottom of the wave, right? So that's really all there is to go over when it comes to sine waves, at least for the purposes of this game. There is, however, one last thing I want to do. So let's say we have our enemies, right? And they're 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 flying sort of in in sync, right? They're they're both flying together. So maybe we don't want that. Maybe we want, let's say. Uh, the inverse so that they're flying like mirrored against each other. So when this one's flying down, this one's flying up, right? So the simplest way to do this is just jumping back into the code. We can just set a uh, uh, Boolean flag here that's whether or not it's inverted. And if it's inverted, then just multiply this value by negative one and we'll get the exact opposite wave, right? So instead of fluctuating from negative one to one, it's fluctuating from one to negative one, which is really the same, but the opposite. Uh, so we'll take this uh, bottom group here and we'll invert all these guys. And then we'll go ahead and play that, see what that looks like. And now they're perfectly mirrored, right? And that pretty much covers um, getting enemies into the game and getting them to move in this classic sine wave pattern. We can't really do anything with them yet. In the next video, I'm gonna go over some collision detection. We're gonna be attaching hitboxes to both the bullets and the enemies, and then letting those two things collide and blow up basically. So you'll be able to take your bullets and shoot at the enemies, which you can't really do right now, but you will be able to after the next video. So have fun playing around with uh, experimenting with what kind of sine wave you like best and what kind of enemies you like to set up off the start. And then after the next video, we'll be blowing them up. Thank you very much. Go ahead and like the video, subscribe if you want to see the rest and uh, take care.